home has a story to tell, and when you're renovating an older property, you may not always be just restoring its original beauty, but preserving its history. Hi, my name is Matthew Meehan. Welcome to my home. I am a huge history buff. I love uh, taking old homes and breathing new life into them. I've done it a few times, and this is our home here in Coral Gables, and we have loved renovating it over the last 20 years. We take a look at the daring task of restoring this beautiful historic property on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. It's so great to be back Saturdays at 11 a.m. and thank you all for joining us today. Today's home tour is a very special one. The story of this home renovation and restoration goes beyond the traditional design and decor. It truly is a labor of love. Built in the mid-1920s, this 8,500 square foot home has five bedrooms and seven bathrooms. It has taken years of meticulous work to restore this amazing home to its former glory. We're here today in Coral Gables touring a beautiful home with the homeowner Matthew. Me and Matthew, welcome to Sofla Home Project. Thank you, thank you. This house has a very rich history. It does, and I'm really happy that you're here because there's a lot of uh, famous people that have uh, been here, stayed here in the home, and a lot of rich architectural history, so I'm really excited to share it with you guys today. Talk a little bit about the backstory of this home. What year was it built? The home was actually built by architect Dudley St. Clair Donnelly. It was commissioned in 1924, built in 1926, originally by the Stevens family out of Albany, New York. They never actually lived in the house, and then a more famous person actually came in at the last minute and bought the home. So I'm sure everyone is familiar with Howard Hughes. Wow. Uh, so it was the cousin of Howard Hughes that actually ended up living in this home. So a lot of famous people throughout uh, a, a good period of time have actually stayed here. So, so truly a yes. rich history. Absolutely. Not just Absolutely. beautiful, but great history in this Indeed. home. This main area here in the living room, the formal living room, we have beautiful flooring. Now, was this flooring original to the home? It was. This is, and, and we're very lucky. Uh, we're one of the few homes left that has the original uh, Cuban terracotta picket tile. A lot that you see here in this room is 100% original, yes. Wow. Including the ironwork behind wonderful. us. Wonderful, yes. That, I mean, this. let's, let's talk a little yeah. bit about this. So this, it really then again sets the tone yeah. for this grandness that you're going to experience as you walk in. Paul Schaefen, uh, that was uh, very instrumental in uh, majority of the design uh, at uh, Vizcaya and also the Deering Estate, uh, worked alongside Phineas Paste, who is the master colorist for the city of Coral Gables. The two of them commissioned Samuel Yellen, who is a world famous ironsmith. We're very lucky that we have Samuel Yellen's ironwork here in this home. The front gates uh, leading into the home, the stairwell uh, in front of us, the gates behind us, uh, you'll see his touches everywhere. How how important was it to get the furnishings just right and did it take a long time to put that together? So I, th I think this room has morphed more times than Cher <laughs> changes outfits during a concert, but uh, you know, it's, it's seen a lot it's, of different looks, right? <laughs> it has seen a lot of different looks over the years. Uh, you know, this one is a little bit more traditional. We wanted when you walked into the home for it to really make a statement yes, and for you to feel like you were in the past. It truly does and it evokes the essence of all that you're going to see and experience. Now. To find the right lighting to fit the time period and again complement the architecture, was that a difficult task? So this room uh, inherently is a little darker because we are in the middle of two courtyards and of course there's covered loggias just before so there was very minimal lighting. So we actually added some can lights here uh, in the room and then doubled the amount of chandeliers. This house was actually built just before air conditioning. So the windows that you see on both sides this acted it. as the pre-air conditioning air conditioner. 
and they're triple hung windows. And that is what allowed the breeze wow. to flow through this house and cool it off on those really hot, muggy summer days. More importantly, in the tradition of the former owners of the home, we throw a lot of parties here. And so it's great for throwing parties. These windows go all the way up. <laughs> and those courtyards become part of this room here. And so you triple the size, basically, of the space. Coming up, see what it took to restore this home's courtyards on Soflo Home Project. There are a lot of new homeowners right now, which means there's a lot of folks that really want to get projects done to their home. We're going to give you a few tips that's going to help you make the best decisions for you and your family on today's Soflo Home Project. Thank everyone who entered Goya's Seasonings, Greetings, Gift Card giveaway on Local10.com. The winner is Dawn Ironimo of Weston. Congratulations, Dawn, and thanks to everyone who entered. Hope you had a good time, because if it's Goya, it has to be good. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we are continuing our tour of this fabulous home restored by homeowner and history lover, Matthew Meehan. Matthew, we talked about the fabulous windows that yes. are here. And I've never, so it's not something we typically see in modern architecture is the right. way they usually pocket into the wall and open up the whole outdoor. These go up. This is the pre-AC AC. The living room is flanked by two beautiful courtyards. The original 1920s windows were designed to create a breezeway for the home when opened. So we actually unlock the windows and then go all the way that. up and then you can just walk right out wow. and so when we throw parties you know this outdoor space becomes part of the indoor space as well when you think about historic homes like this is this is part of it and it's it such is. a big part of it it is and you just don't see something like that at all anymore so yeah. I, this is the only time i've ever seen anything like this personally me too we tour a lot of homes this yeah. is our first home when we were walking through the windows yeah, outdoors right? <laughs> can't say that often <laughs> not through the doors no so we are going to walk on through and check out the courtyard. But before we do that, I want to check in with FHIA and see what they have going on today. Let's do it. Let's go. In meeting with this new homeowner, we recognize that there's a lot of folks, especially right now in this hot real estate market, who just purchased the new home and is looking now that they're in the home to do some home remodeling and to change some things and make things better. So giving you a couple ideas and a couple tips of some things to look for so that when you're ready to make that decision you're really educated and you're making the best decision for you and your new home. So we always start with the front entry door because it's something that obviously you use a lot coming in and out of the home and it's something that's a real vital part of protecting your home. Does it open and close properly? Is it sealed properly? Does it allow uh, air to come in? Does it allow, allow moisture to come in? Um, is it hurricane rated? Is it something really important? Do we feel safe? Do we feel secure from somebody potentially breaking in? From a cosmetic standpoint, there's some reasons to address the front door. Also from some functionality and as well as hurricane protection and safety, uh, we like to start with the front door and then walk, walk around the perimeter to help homeowners uh, assess what they have once we get here. So like right now this door is a French door um, which obviously swings out. Um, depending on what this family's planning on doing with the patio, we may suggest to change to a sliding glass door which would give them more patio space because this takes away a few feet where you can't put furniture. We also want to recognize if there's small children in the house because once you put in a really heavy hurricane impact door, a lot of times if the wind catches this, it's dangerous for small children that could be running behind, so we want to make sure that that's safe. These are all a couple things that we like to talk about and really get a feel for what we're trying to accomplish and not only right now, but try to think ahead so that we're making the right decision when we make this investment. Also, it's so important, and we've stressed it in the past, how important it is to meet with a contractor and have a really good consultation, ask a lot of questions, and make sure you're getting the answers that are best for you and your family. And let's make sure that we can fit it into your budget so you can afford everything that you're trying to get done. Back to you, Elena. So we're now on the other side of the windows, Matthew, in this beautiful courtyard, one of two. Correct, we're in the Koi Garden right now. Love that, you have to have the beautiful Koi. I mean, what a serene 
and beautiful area to just sit and either enjoy coffee. This is exactly right. This is where I have my coffee in the morning, I read the newspaper, I start the day right here in this uh, koi garden. And behind me, actually, is an original fountain. The fish that you see spitting the water is original to this courtyard. Wow. And I had it duplicated because the mirror courtyard actually did not have the fountain or that fish. Wow, so, so what was that process like? Kind of, because I know this can be a challenge in design to find the yes. items that look original. So I brought a ceramicist out and she made a mold of uh, the original fish that you see back there spitting the water. And uh, she fired, glazed, and in the other courtyard, it's an identical copy of, of the original that we have in here. The beautiful tile that you see here, which is original, we chose tile in the other courtyard that replicated as closely as possible to the original. And it truly is all about those details when you are sort of renovating and also restoring yes. in a historic home, right? Abs absolutely. So we have beautiful archways and columns, all of these things original to the architecture of the home? They are. So this uh, house was actually modeled after the famous tower in uh, Seville, Spain. All the columns, we actually had those restored as well. Um, the before, oh my God, so it, <laughs> it was bad. Work. Yes, it took a lot of restoration work. And uh, what we did is we chipped down, there were layers and layers of paint, and we chipped all that paint off and got back down to the original stone and saw what its color was. And then we had that um, color replicated uh, with a lime paint that we used uh, to recoat. Uh, back to its original color of what the home would have been. So a lot of work goes into creating something oh, yeah. to look original. Coming up next, join us in the piano room where not everything is as it appears to be. back to Soplo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're continuing our tour of this beautiful historic Coral Gables home with the homeowner Matthew Meehan. Matthew, we have seen a couple of the spaces here, all beautiful. We saw the formal living room, yes. the courtyards, and now the piano room. That's right? right, the music suite. A lot of history behind this room too. Adjacent to the foyer, we find the piano room. In 1928, skilled artisans were brought in to enhance the handmade details of this room. When we started uh, conceptualizing what to do with this room, we first went to the Microfish uh, Film Department again Did at the, the city. research, yes. Exactly, put the research in. And uh, we found that this was an original music suite. And we thought it would be a lot of fun to recreate that. From what we could tell, uh, from those microfish films, we tried to choose materials and paint colors back Everything to what it was. That in. Exactly. So the patterns and all of that, like colors that you wanted to bring in, but exactly. play to the original. Exactly. And there's a special story behind the panels that you see that we're surrounded by here in this music suite. The big hurricane of 26 came through, did some damage to the home. In 1928, Phineas Paste, who is the master colorist, here in the city of Coral Gables, was commissioned by the Hughes family to come in and sort of re-envision this space. So he came up with the concept of doing the paneled walls in here. And it's actually not wood. So this oh, is... Oh, no way. I mean, yes. I, I, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, it. that's such a trick to the eye. It truly it, looks it, like wood. It totally is. The plaster, again, right. was, it was used because termites of the time were an issue here in South Florida. Now, I want to talk about these beams because this is another one of those things. Is it original or was that added? So those beams are part of the renovation from 1928 that Phineas Paste uh, was in charge of. So this and the panels are what? Are the all same. the same plaster, okay. exactly. Wow, so those are plaster beams. But you see the gargoyles up there, the gargoyles and the cherubs, oh, exactly. God. Wow, this is this truly, this room really sets the tone for that historic feel. And I love the way you've kind of just kept that in mind and, and just enhanced with your own personal touches. You know, the original owner of this home, Edmund Hughes, and his wife, Anna May, uh, Anna was a bit of an opera singer. 
And so, so as, as a lot of use. story has it, <laughs> this house has seen the likes of Newt Rockney, the uh, uh, coach, head coach of Notre Dame, and Mickey Mantle wow. uh, has stayed here as well, uh, back in the heyday as guests. Impressive guest, guest list. <laughs> yes, yes. So imagine, you know, this is where the entertaining happened the right here. They knew how to do it right back they then, did. and then you still do now with all of this. What a great space. Oh, we've loved it. Next, we check out the office, which was re-envisioned from four plain walls to a proper English study. Welcome back to Soplo Home Project. I'm Alina Capra. We are on the last stop of part one of our tour of this beautiful Coral Gables home with homeowner Matthew Mee and Matthew. Now we're in the office. Welcome to my office. This is quite a beautiful office, perfectly fitting for this home. Across from the piano room, we find the office. The rich woodwork makes this an elegant space to conduct business in. What was original here? Was this Absolutely anything? nothing that you see. <laughs> Love so that. This <laughs> we went from a room that had a lot of original to now. To the room next to it that was just four sheetrock walls. I wanted to transition from that music suite into a proper office. So this actually is real wood, it's not plaster. And I took small little elements from that music suite. I didn't want to take away from the historical aspect right. and completely copy the paneling, but I did pay homage. So down here you see uh, two of the linen fold panelings. And then detail. the one carving right here. Uh, so they're enlarged from what you saw out in the music suite. But fun little surprise, unlike Just out there, there's nothing behind. <laughs> Those. Now this, this brings it in. Is of course when you're working wow. and you're on a really crazy call and you just need some champagne. It's right there. Now and let me say, <laughs> we. I mean, I've paneled many a wine fridge and I've seen many paneled wine fridges. This might be the most opulent carved <laughs> panel I've ever seen on a wine refrigerator. So beautiful. And then on this side, two desks, symmetrical. And the really nice thing uh, about the office is the seating area that we have. I can't tell so you how many meetings. Beautiful. Beautiful. We have with people that come in, you know, we'll pop a bottle of Very champagne or wine, have a quick meeting here, but that actually pulls out into a bed as well. So additional guest so, suite. So, correct. So, of course, you said this doubles as a guest suite, and what guest suite would be complete without a full bathroom? Exactly. So, the bathroom, we actually have, uh, it was a complete renovation. Uh, the original tile in there wasn't really salvageable. Uh, so we saved as much as we could. I'm going to repurpose that in a future renovation in another I area of the look home. Look forward to seeing that. But the way that I did the bathroom was such that it still pays homage to the period of the home. So we went with a, a very art, uh, very traditional art deco pattern uh, made from stained glass. The uh, vanity top and the tub top is actually a Persian marble. When you renovate a bathroom in a historic home, that's the one room, usually the rooms with plumbing are the ones that probably need to be updated. Oh yes. Bringing things up to code and all that. Were there a lot of challenges in that besides just the aesthetic? So this entire home from head to toe has been ripped down to the studs. And every piece of uh, original tile, fireplaces, woodwork, trim was all saved and then reinstalled again. Wow, so, so that is a great fact yes. to know. I actually came home one day before the renovation and the living room ceiling had completely collapsed oh because my gosh. finally the galvanized pipes burst. This was shortly after moving in. And uh, yeah, it was sort of uh, That means more renovation and more, more chances to redesign. <laughs> that's right. It, it was time's way of saying, now's the time to renovate this bad baby. Yes, yeah, sometimes so we, we don't did. always have the choice, that's right. right? That's right. But it's for a beautiful renovation. Thank and you. you're, I think you did such an amazing job with this home. And I can't wait to bring our viewers back yes. next week to check out more of the spaces, including some great outdoor spaces, entertaining spaces. That's right. There's a lot, so you better tune in next week. Matthew, I want to thank you so much, and we look forward to having you back. It's been great. And now, a little sneak peek of what we've got planned for you on part two of next week's tour. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, join me for part two of this home tour, where we'll explore some of the grand entertaining spaces of this historic property. And before we go, let's check in with Hunter Frankie, the host of SoFlo Health, 
and see what he has going on tomorrow. Hunter, what's up? Hey there, Elena. I'm at the comic book store, and this week on SoFlow Health, we are looking at comics. And did you know that these can actually help increase your vocabulary and brain activity? If that's not enough health for you, then you can join personal trainer Morgan Shapiro, who helps you get big strength out of these mini bands. We visit a farmer's market and farm recently turned rescue, and part two of our interview with South Florida comedy legend, Woody Woodbury. All of that and more is tomorrow on SoFlow Health, right here on Local 10 at 1230. Thanks, Hunter. We will definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, we hope to see you again next week for part two of our tour and another all new episode of SoFlow Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like SoFlow Home. If you missed any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloShows.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram.